stories people who have acted in embarrassing roles, no matter how minor, or who were casted, because they were fat or ugly, how was the experience, were you treated well, did you handle it well, did you or anyone else learn anything from the experience? For a high school play a while back, we did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, as it was the only panto to be done in years as my school tended to lean towards musicals, shitty ones, I was pretty pumped to finally be able to take part, so I rocked up to auditions, and guess what I got? Augustus. Fucking. Gloop. As in, only characterization being literally just being fat, but I wasn't offended, instead I went along with it, in fact I threw myself at it, getting my accent right, getting the pregnancy props in just the formation for maximum obesity, and when it came to the performance, I was hit with something, what if girls watch this? What if I never live this down? I knew I was in too deep to pull out now, so you know what I did. I was the best, most outrageous gloop you would ever see in a school production. And yes, I was known for my gloop part, but not for being a fat German guy, for being a passionate player of a fat German guy. Moral of the story, don't be a little bitch, do it and do it well. I learnt I could do a pretty good German accent, and that people do not always need to be jerks. I'm a woman, and I was in the high school musical at my school each year. I'd always get cast in a guy's role, because we were short on guys and I can sing tenor. So, this one year, I get cast in the role of the wizard in Once Upon a Mattress, a parody of the princess and the pea. This guy is supposed to be a suck up, and toady to the evil queen, a total dormant. The person playing the queen and I never really got along very well, but I had to be the ultimate suck up to her the entire show. On top of this, there's this one scene, where two characters get me drunk and compliment me, until I spill a secret they need. Because I was female and the one who kept complimenting me, and encouraging me to drink was a guy, I figured I'd act flirty with him. After we perform the musical for everyone, three nights of shows, I come to find out, that I've got a new nickname, the bisexual wizard. Seems like people took my sucking up to the queen to also be flirting. They couldn't tell if I was supposed to be male or female due to me being female, but the character being a wizard singing tenor parts. So, I was the gender ambiguous bisexual comic relief character. All in all, it was a blast. Ten tenths were due again. However, it was an odd thing to have someone scream it's you. The bisexual wizard. From across a room. When an old classmate saw me at college. When I went on holiday to Mumbai I was an extra for a pretty big upcoming Bollywood film as they needed a group of white people and I'm lucky enough to be white. So, halfway through the day they need a white woman to play a middle aged, unfashionable, ugly and generally unflattering character. I was the youngest of all the ladies in the foreign group at 21, but the casting person took one look at me and decided I fitted the bill, being unfashionable and the ugliest. Did I mind? Not really. You gotta work what your mama gave you, and it did mean that I got my very own scene. I hope they don't cut it out. A few years ago I was in a scene in a bar where my character had to finish draining half a pint, deliver a monologue, then chuck back a full pint of beer. Before filming the props people asked me if I wanted to drink apple juice or iced tea as my fake beer. Having never been in this position before I was unsure which to choose, but not wanting to look like a noob I selected apple juice. We began filming. Our first few takes went okay, but there were some flubs here and there. After 5 takes, I have now drank 7. 5 full pints of apple juice. We did a few more takes. I'm now somewhere around 10 pints. I'm feeling very uncomfortable, and my fidgeting ruins a shot, and I ask if we can take a bathroom break. The director, who from what I saw, was something of a hardass, said they were under a tight schedule, so no bathroom breaks. I lost track of how many pints of apple juice I'd rank, but it ended up being somewhere around 17. Finally I couldn't take it anymore. My bowels were playing the you're gonna regret this symphony, and I knew I didn't have long to do that. Despite the director's objections, I told them that the apple juice was coming out, whether he wanted it to or not, and walked to the bathroom, located about 20 feet away from the chute. It was a small one-person bathroom, and there were like 30 people standing on the other side of the door. Now, let me say, 17 pints of apple juice in short period of time does strange things to your bowels. 
the apple juice came out, much in the way that rusty water shoots out of a fire hose. The noise was appalling, and loud. When I came back out no one would meet my eye. We did one more take where, unencumbered by apple juice poop cramps, I did fine and the we were done shooting. No one said a word, even though the bathroom now smelled like someone had crapped on a barrel of apple sea idea. This was a student film in college, so it might not be exactly what you're looking for, but oh well. A girl I used to be close friends with asked me to be in it, since I fit one of the roles so well. I said yes before even looking at the script, and then later saw that the character was a huge creep. The story was about a killer slowly picking off people one by one. My character was a red herring, someone the audience is meant to think is the murderer until the real one reveals themselves, and that was all I was. Really, my character's only purpose was to be a weirdo. I wound up embracing the part and had a great time. The film itself was kind of nonsensical, but I got complimented a bunch of times on my role. In a weird way, it wound up making me be a lot more confident and outgoing, and to not be so embarrassed about being myself. My friend and I don't really talk anymore, but that's due to other stuff. She may have thought I was a creep, but this led me to re-examine myself, stop doing what I didn't like about myself, and embrace other things about myself I had previously thought were really out there, and be happy with them. It was over 10 years ago now, but it's still the one dance routine that I've never forgotten. I was about 12 years old, and my classes were after school, so I had sort of zoned out while the coach was talking. She must have asked for a volunteer from the class, but no one had put their hand up. All of a sudden I heard what about you, mind be 14, and I just automatically said yes. And that was how I became to be the pregnant sheep in the dance routine. I don't even remember the storyline, but I do remember that I had to give birth to a baby lamb from my ass. On stage. Last year I played Mr. Darling in the musical version of Peter Pan. The role wasn't too difficult, but at some point I had to crawl into a doghouse to sleep. Now, the doghouse was tiny, so what I was forced to do was get down on my knees, bend over, and scooch into it in front of like 400 people every night. Then, for like a minute and a half, my clothed ass was facing the audience, sticking right out of the doghouse. Not to mention it was hot as fuck inside there. By the time I got out I was sweating like crazy, I was wearing three layers, and had to look like I was super fucking pumped to see my kids come home from Neverland. All thanks to Peter fucking Pan. When I was about 14, my school put on a production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I loved acting, and really wanted to play Violet Beauregard. Alas, I did not get the role, instead, I was cast as Grandpa George, the other grandpa. As a 14 year old female, I was not impressed, but was determined to do my best and show I was funny and could act. The drama teacher thought it would be hilarious for me to have the character loudly fart throughout the production, to the disdain of the other characters. Unlike some talented folks, I cannot, and would not, fart on cue, so had to make fart noises throughout. It was, of course, embarrassing. All I learned is that I make pretty convincing and amusing fart noises. Sadly, however, I did not continue my school acting career. This is beyond minor, and not sure if it qualifies for what Op had in mind, but here goes. I'm a PhD in astronomy and female, and specialize in radio astronomy. Astronomy is already a rather male-dominated field. I think it's 25% female or something. But radio astronomy is even more gender biased I don't blink when I'm the only woman in a meeting of 20 people, for example, though I think the rate is about 10% or so. Anyway, I was visiting another radio astronomy institute a year or so ago for a few days collaboration with a colleague, and on the first day or so a separate project in the same building came up to me and asked me if I could be in the informational film for their institute. But I'm in no way related to what you guys are doing. I protested. We know, they said, but we have no women who work for us, and that looks bad, so would you mind being in it? I balked, because, I mean, come on, but then it was explained to me that it was a video for high school students, so I agreed. It might be an absurd situation, but I don't want some high school student to be turned off by a field I happen to love, because she doesn't think she'd be welcome. 
so they were rather nice, and we filmed a few minutes of me talking about the research I was doing with someone from that project, even though it had nothing to do with anything that project was actually doing. And I guess somewhere in the Netherlands there is an astronomy outreach video shown to high school students that I'm in, but I've never seen it. Though I just checked, and that project still has no women working for it, which should tell you something. Finn. Not embarrassing but I got the role, because I was fat. I was the zombie clown stand-in in the movie Land of the Dead. Now I'm not the main zombie clown, I'm his stand-in. So I did everything they don't need his face for. You see the back of my head, my feet etc. The guy playing the part was 300 plus pounds, so therefore they needed someone to match, but they don't want to pay union wages for the back of the guy's head, so they bring in someone like me. I got paid about $200 for 6 hours work which isn't great, but I had a private trailer, and got a good meal, even though I wasn't in the actors union. Normally people not in the union only get snacks and leftovers. The worst part was I had to be down on my knees eating some guy's guts for hours. Being a 300 pound guy makes kneeling for long periods of time very hard. I didn't want to complain though as that was my biggest thing. I was a featured extra on how I met your mother. I was literally cast as loser hash one or something to that effect. It's the episode blitz jiving with Hurley from Lost. I got a call from central casting asking if I wanted to be on the show and was like oh hell yes. Was told to dress appropriately. At the time I was 5 feet 8 inches and 250 pounds and I wore a sweater at least one size too tight. I didn't know to expect when I showed up, but I was treated great and the experience of being on a closed set with no one but the main cast, crew, loser hash 2, and myself around was awesome. I was even able to chat with the writer of the episode who I recognized from her acting days, and talked with her about my own improv experiences with UCB, and the part actually got my recognized quite a bit, even still. I'm really proud to have been featured on such a great show, but at the same time I hate really talking about it with acquaintances, because it is kind of a double-edged sword. I was fat and cheeky looking, so I got cast on a hit TV show, but I had no lines. But hey, I was one of the blitzes, so I've got that going for me which is nice. I worked as an extra in La for a couple years, mostly on commercials. The first job I ever had was for an SL coffee commercial at an airport. The concept was a drab airport security checkpoint that suddenly erupts into dancing because of how awesome the coffee is. I was picked out of the crowd to be in the shot as they were short one principal actor. I agreed, knowing that if my face was recognizable on camera for more than 3 seconds, I would get a pay bump and likely be able to join the Screen Actors Guild, which is amazing because you get paid so much more for the same extras job, but you can't just apply to be in SAG. I was placed right in the middle of the shot and told to take my shoes on and off. That was the only direction the ad gave me. Then the director, fresh from smoking a joint outside, took over the camera and said I need to start dancing too while sitting down. I am not a dancer. I like doing it, but as a 6 feet 3 inches 220 pounds man, it's hard for me to move in a way that actually looks cool, especially sitting down. I gave it my best shot, thinking Jesus Christ, the first time I'm going to be on national TV it'll be dancing while sitting down, basically doing the Chandler Bing dance. The director came up to me after a few takes and asked if I would get up and do the worm. Uh, no sir, that isn't one of my skills. Just try it he says. Who okay. Two takes of me flopping around on the ground and he let me return to my awkward sitting down dancing. When we broke for lunch, I went to the guy in charge of the extras and asked about my pay bump and SAG voucher since I was in the shot for nearly the whole commercial. He said to me this is a commercial that's airing in France, so none of those rules apply. While I was never trying to be a real actor, I was getting really excited to be in the SAG and make more money doing easy work, so I was pretty disappointed. I consoled myself thinking things like this would happen all the time, but two years later I was packing up my belongings and moving back to the Midwest, an unknown extra actor who couldn't pay his rent anymore. I've searched but never found that ad before. I'd really like to see how bad I look dancing. Cest Larvae.